Okay, Michelle, looks like we can go ahead and take off. Okay, you can hear us. <laughs> All right. Well, hello, everybody, and we want to welcome you to the Cake Fu Master Series training. Um, we're sorry we're a couple minutes late getting going here. We had a little some technical difficulties, as often happens with computers. Um, and in case you're wondering what happened to Amelia's voice, I am not Amelia. <laughs> <laughs> I am actually a friend and a fan of Amelia. My name is Michelle Davis, and I'm going to act as our host today because we are so blessed to have Amelia doing our training today. And so she asked me if I would just kind of join in so that she's not a lone soul out here doing it all by herself. So I'm going to just kind of guide us through a little bit, but Amelia is going to, going to take over with most of it. So, um, so just again, real quick on myself, my name is Michelle Davis, and I'll just give you a, a quick introduction for me. Um, I've been decorating cakes for about 15 years, uh, kind of off and on. Um, with kids and stuff, but um, and right now I, I live in Mont Belgrade, Montana, and I don't own a bakery, but I um, I have a an app out for the iPhone called Sweet Dreams Cake App, and I also uh, run a blog called Sweet, Sweet Dreams Cake App dot com, um, and I'm in the process right now of getting out a cookie decorating app as well, and so you should hopefully see that out there in a couple months, but. Enough about me, though. We, we want to talk about Amelia. So um, she really probably doesn't need much introduction, since I'm sure most of you already know who she is if you've joined us for any of these trainings. Um, but a lot of times you see her as the host. And of course, Amelia is also an amazing cake decorator herself and has lots of great things to teach us. So today she's going to uh, be teaching us a little bit on a denim technique. And so I'll just, um, Amelia, I'll just kind of introduce you a little bit for those who don't know her. Um, so you've been decorating cakes for about 11 years, you said, right? Yeah, yeah, the, the little thing says 10 years. I guess I should have changed that <laughs> the last <laughs> time we had a training with me. But yeah, it's been about 11 years. I, I can always tell that it's, you know, been another year because of my sister's anniversary so <laughs> that's a great way to be able to remember when you have a special event like that when it started <laughs> yep <laughs> yep and it was my trial by fire so <laughs> yeah that's usually the best way to dive into things isn't it <laughs> that's why I'm doing this hosting here for this <laughs> exactly and I really appreciate it <laughs> Yeah, no problem. Um, and Amelia, of course, is um, also an, an award-winning cake decorator, and I know she's done several contests. And, and the biggie is um, she's been in the Oklahoma, sh uh, Oklahoma State Sugar Art Show twice. She's entered both times coming in the top five uh, at of the, the winning top five cakes. And if you have not been to the Oklahoma State Sugar Art Show, you cannot fully appreciate the level of cakes that these are. I mean, I had always heard about how amazing they were. And I finally got a chance to go a couple years in a row. And oh my goodness, they I was just completely blown away. So to know that Amelia had placed a third runner-up and fourth runner-up two years in a row, I, it just gave a whole new level of credibility to her abilities. It was just incredible. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yes. And she's also been on TLC's Ultimate Cake Off, uh, which that was really fun to watch. And she's owned, um, when she lived in Utah, she owned Frosted Fantasy Cakes, which uh, she now lives in Las Vegas. And do you, are, do you still run a business like that in Las Vegas? No, I actually don't have an official like bakery type cake business. The the laws here in in Nevada are different than in Utah. I don't have the they don't have the cottage laws here, and I didn't want to leave my you know six little kids to you know fend for themselves <laughs> while I go do things. So, uh, cake food is my my main focus right now. So, all right. And then you've also taught too at the ISIS convention, and um, and you've taught some in. Uh, did you uh, did you t teach slope recently too? Or? Yes, I I am looking at this about page and it is so un not updated. <laughs> <laughs> it is so not updated. I have another kid from <laughs> I don't have five kids. I have six and the the convention I have actually taught at two conventions. I taught one in in Reno last year. So okay, yeah, yeah, I thought you had mm -hmm. yeah. And so, and of course, you've um, come up then with this cake foo, which has been a wonderful way to get a lot of information out there to all of us decorators.
operators who are trying to constantly learn more. But I, I do have to say, of all your achievements and accomplishments, I think your greatest accomplishment is being the mother of six beautiful children. I, oh, that is amazing, and uh, I'm just amazed that you can even ever get to any cakes with six children at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it can be, you know, hectic at, at times. I'm, I'm actually doing one this week for Icing Smiles, so I'm really excited about that. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So I have a babysitter coming over on Friday to, <laughs> to watch my kids for a few hours. <laughs> oh, that is great. And that's for anyone who's not familiar with that organization, that is just an incredible organization that, um, do you want to explain what they do, Amelia? Sure, yeah. Well, Icing Smiles is a, a really great organization. They, um, they have a, a system set up where you can go on and volunteer to do a cake for uh, a child who is terminally ill and you know th these families are are just needing some kind of you know boost and pick me up because they're they're you know no no kid should have to go through what they have to go through with this kind of thing and you know to be able to put a smile on their face for even five minutes you know it's it makes it all worth it so right oh, <laughs> look there's me <laughs> 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 Oops. <laughs> okay, we're going to have to reopen something really fast. Here we go, guys. Sorry. And you guys can see me how I look without makeup. My goodness. I look <laughs> That's what a true mom of six kids is like. Yes, this is mom of six kids right here. <laughs> yeah, my little boy was kind of sad today, so I didn't get to me. <laughs> okay, so here we should be back now. Oh, boy, was oh. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> okay, so here we should be back now. Oh, and now I can hear. Oh, yeah, my son was playing over. Okay, there, I think I stopped it. Hopefully we're, we're okay again. <laughs> okay, can you can you still hear me though, right? Yes, I can still hear you. Yeah, Perfect. we're good. Okay. Nope. Yeah, well, and so you're going to be teaching us today on um, this cake that you just recently did, is that correct? Yeah, I did a cake for, it was just a, a 50th birthday, and I posted a picture of it, and I got a lot of, how did you do that? So I thought, hey, you know, <laughs> the, the trainer that we were supposed to have a couple weeks, or the, today, um, had an, you know, some kind of a... I guess emergency or something couldn't do it, so I thought, oh, well, I guess we'll teach this. Oh, and I'm so excited for this too because I saw the cake and I just absolutely loved it, which I know a lot of people did. Um, and especially I live out in the country, and so we get you know a lot. Everyone wears jeans out here, and I, <laughs> I just, there's been a lot of times when I've when I've thought about you know incorporating some kind of gene aspect into my cakes, but wasn't quite sure how to do it. And yours just really has turned out some of the best of some of them that I've ever seen. So I'm so excited to for you to teach us. Well, thank you, thank you. Well, do you want to just go ahead and get going on it? Yeah, sure. Okay, so um, I I knew I wanted to do this jean cake. I actually went online and did some, you know, Google searching because that's what we all do when we have a cake inspiration and and, and try to find things out. Yep. Uh, and so I did a Google search for like a jean effect on cake. And I didn't find very much. And what I did find, it just wasn't what I wanted. And so I thought, oh, why isn't there anything out there? Why hasn't anybody figured this out yet? <laughs> so I, I'm sure that somebody somewhere has a really nice gene technique that I just didn't find. But this is the way I came up with. And so I hope you guys, you know, like the, the way it worked out. Um, when I when I looked at a pair of jeans and thought, how do I create this? I saw you know lines that go back and forth, and I saw you know a, kind of a dot type texture. And I thought, well, I could use a a paper towel and just like you know tap out texture, and maybe that'll work. But then I thought, eh, that'll look more marbled than jean. And then I thought I could just do brush strokes up. And down and sideways, and you know, and and then I thought, uh, that's not what I want either. So, so this is the way I came up to to do my my denim. <laughs> so first of all, you guys, you'll need um, two fan brushes, and uh, one that's dry, one that you'll actually use wet. 
And can we um, just get those at just like a craft store or whatever? Yeah, any kind of hobby store. The the thing about this this brush, I know that there will probably be a lot of questions on what brand of brushes do you use. And for this, the cheapest brush you can find is the best because you want it to separate. You want it to be able to, you know, come apart and not have that perfectly even brush stroke. So the cheaper the brush, the better with this. <laughs> okay, okay. So. <laughs> As opposed to if you're really doing paintings. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you're going to do like a really fancy painting, you would want a nice brush that stays together, that stays, you know. Right. Nice and even, but this one you want it to separate a little bit. So and, oh, so, and before we before we go on, Amelia, should yes. we mention um, if if people have questions, just um, to go to the bottom of the page there. They can uh, ask their question and go ahead and submit that, and that will come to me, and then um, I will kind of go through them and and we'll ask Amelia questions later on at the end of the, the teaching. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So um, you've got your fan brushes, and then. Paper towels. Um, you want to make sure that it's a textured paper towel. This one right here is a it's a bounty paper towel. So I I know that there's lots of textured paper towels out there. So I you know you can use whatever you want as long as it has some some you know I guess divots and yeah that texture. Yeah. So. Okay, and then airbrush colors. Uh, those are, I, I always use airbrush colors whenever I'm painting. I know that a lot of people use just watered down food coloring, uh, but I, I always run to my airbrush colors because they're already diluted, they're already ready. So that's. Oh, so you don't have to mix them with any kind of extract or alcohol or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, that's what I, that's what I tend to, to go for. Uh -huh. so, and I used blue, black, and white. So those are. Those are the colors I used. All right, so then we're going to start with a, a really light blue surface uh, on our fondant. You can, I, of course, if you're going to be going for a different style or color of jean, of course, you can change the color, but this is what I went with. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> so. Your traditional jean that way. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then we're going to do, uh, with our first fan, er, fan brush, we're going to dip it in the blue airbrush color and we're just going to do up and down strokes. Just go up and down and up and down around the whole cake. Um, you don't want it to be, I mean, you don't, you don't want it to be perfect. So, I mean, it, this is such a don't worry about it kind of a thing. It doesn't have to be perfect. And in fact, you don't want it to be perfect because then it won't look like what you want it to look. Right, you want to, yeah, look more realistic that way then. Yeah, and just a tip for you guys, make sure that um, you're doing this on a, the surface under your cake is not another tier of cake, because otherwise you're going to get paint on it. So you actually want to do this texturing and everything before you put your cake together. Um, I I made the the mistake of doing my base tier and my bottom tier on the actual base, and I ended up getting some blue food coloring on my base. So you don't yeah. So <laughs> make sure you do that first before you put it all together. That's where it's so helpful to to talk to somebody who's already done it that can because you always learn these things after you make the mistake. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. So it, that that's something I will always do if I you know next time I do this I I will make sure it's on a a different surface or at least put you know a paper towel or a sheet of wax paper you know wedge it in between your tears or whatever just make sure that there's something down there that you're not gonna you know get your brush work on. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. So, all right. Then you can gonna take your same fan brush, uh, same color, and you're just gonna go horizontal stripes and just go back and forth and back and forth. Um, again, it's all random. It's all imperfections. So don't don't worry about being the perfectionist on this one. That's hard for me because I am kind of a perfectionist. <laughs> I understand. I'm that way too. <laughs> but the more random, the better. And you know, it makes it go a lot faster. You know, so this is this is actually 
I mean, you have to give it time in between to dry a little bit, but it's a fairly quick technique given it's an overall whole cake coverage kind of thing. So, right. So it's not not too bad. All right, then we're going to take our paper towel and fold it up. I know um, a lot of times when I'm trying to do like a marbling technique or something, I'll take a paper towel and I'll wad it up, I'll scrunch it up, mm -hmm. and and then it'll give a really good marbling effect, you know, when you're doing that kind of thing. But this one I wanted an, kind of an overall fabric look, and so I just folded it. I didn't, you know, wad it up or anything. So. Uh -huh. And then um, you're going to take your blue food coloring and add just a few drops of black. In fact, it's it's just barely any black at all. If you add very much black, the whole thing is going to go, you know, black. <laughs> right. Just so, enough to darken, just a hint. Huh? Exactly. I know the the paper towel looks like it's completely black, but it's it, it absorbs the black and and accents the black a lot more than than. Yeah, then the true color is. So uh -huh. I guess, I, I mean, you can see right here, I start to put the the blue on the darker blue. And you can see that, you know, there's quite a bit of blue in there. and But there's some black. Uh -huh. so, yeah, that's going to add to your, the, you know, the dimension of things. You want to, you want it to look like, you know, an actual piece of fabric and, and denim isn't flat. You can actually see the, you know, different levels and layers. So, right. So, yeah, you're going to just do that all over the whole cake. You just keep dipping your paper towel into, you know, your, your color and then just keep patting it all the way around. Now, did you have to, um, when you brushed on the, the original blue stripes, did you need to let those set and dry for a while before you did this next, this step? A little bit. Um, it actually worked out pretty well because it being a two-tiered cake, I just did one tier with the vertical stripes and then did the other tier with the vertical stripes, then went back to the first tier, did the horizontal stripes and horizontal stripes on the other one. By the time I got back to this first tier, it was it was dry enough that I would okay. go and do the next layer. So yeah. So yeah, you want to give it a little bit of time, but if you're doing anything more than a one layer of cake, you you know, you'll naturally use that time doing it. So. Right. Right. Okay. And so there's kind of the the overall, you can see that I've got the you know, the paper towel effect over the top of that. Um, and so you can still see a little bit, you can still see those lines going vertically and horizontally. And I think that's where, you know, I think that's where the difference is made with this gene effect is that you have both and you have the, the layers. Uh -huh. so. Yeah, definitely. It's neat looking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of fun. And I mean, you could stop there, but I always have to take it a step further. <laughs> <laughs> And um, by the way, if you don't want to make your hands, you know, black, you might want to wear a glove because, <laughs> especially if you're doing a lot. I mean, yeah, it, it, my hands are still a little blue from that. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our, our last, well, not our last, um, our, our next layer that we're going to do. We're going to take our white uh, airbrush color. Um, white, you, you got to make sure that you shake that really well. Um, it, it separates really quickly. So every time you get, every time you refill the white, every time you use it, you want to shake it really well. Um, so then the same paper towel effect. Uh, you can see I already started doing some of the the white. It picks up a little bit of the blue, but that's okay. Um, it, it blends pretty well. And so if you see at the top of the at the top of the uh, cake, you can see a little bit of the white. Um, I did get a spot in there that was extra white. And at first I was like, oh no, I messed it up. But you know, if you look at a pair of jeans, naturally they have that, you know, that washed effect, that 
you know, right the fading and stuff in them exactly and so I you know that was a oh no I messed up and then it was a oh well, you know what that's probably a good thing <laughs> those are the so, best mess ups <laughs> exactly exactly so again it's the imperfections are actually a really good thing on this cake so you don't have to worry too much about you know messing things up and you want to do just enough of this white so that you can see the you know a little bit of white on the top and but you can still see everything else that's going through the cake you know you know still see those stripes and you still want to see that light blue throughout the you know the the, the original light blue uh -huh. so just make sure you see kind of all the colors and you know by the time i got to this point i thought well what was the point of doing those vertical stripes because they're almost gone you can hardly see them but I actually went through on another piece of fondant and I tried doing just the, you know, just the paper towel effect and it really did make a big difference. So you might look back and think, oh, well, the stripes are pretty much gone. There's, was there really a point in that? But it really does it really make does a difference not. overall. Just give yeah. some depth to it a little bit. I'm sure you just see just enough of it to, to give it that mm -hmm. stitching look or, or whatever that the fabric would have. Yeah, yeah. All right, so our last step um, is going to be with our, our dry brush. And so we're going to take that dry brush and just, um, you don't want to do an overall sweep with this brush. You want to do just tiny little, you know, um, tiny little strokes. So you're basically, you're just mimicking the, the little threads that are in the fabric. And you're, what you're doing is you're pulling the, the white that you've just done, you're kind of pulling it and dragging it a little bit. So you actually want to do this while your white is still there and wet. Um, and you don't want to do the whole thing. You don't want to get you know the whole thing crisscrossed. Just little bits here and there and you know just drag just a tiny bit. And that's, that's what, what's going to give you those you know, little tiny threads that, that you can see in a pair of jeans, just the little white threads here and there. Right. So that's now, so you said you want it still a little bit wet, so do you do it mm -hmm. in sections then, or do you yes. put it all over the whole cake, the white first, and then come back to it? Yeah, you want to do it in sections, and so I will do like a about a maybe a four inch square of the, of the white, and then I'll dry brush it and then you know move on and do another and then dry brush that so so okay. it, you know it kind of just in in sections as you go all the way around right so, right so yeah that looks really good thank you so then when you're done with that um, another thing is uh, this is all part of the you know the decorating part now um, when you decide where you want your, I, I guess, the, the seams of, mm -hmm. of the pants uh, or the jeans, the denim, where you want the seams, you're going to actually do darker in that area. I, if you look at a pair of jeans, you know, just go to your closet or the ones you're wearing now, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can see where the seams are, there is a darker section right there. Mm -hmm. um, I did my my dark section probably thicker than I than I wanted it to, and in fact, when I when I finished, I went back with the white and and you know padded out a little bit more white so that it blended a little bit more and took away a little bit of that because I I thought it was just a little too wide. Oh, okay, yeah. But so yeah, you can see I marked where I wanted my seams to be. And then I just. What did you use to mark it? Um, I just used a. What did I use? I I think just a just a, a pastry wheel is what I marked it with. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you could use. I I mean you could use anything that's you know like a straight edge. I I actually used a straight edge, um, like a ruler, and and marked it with that way with the pastry wheel but if you're I mean, we're getting some um there sounds like some men talking in the background okay. hang on hang on i guess she's getting that figured out for us she'll be right back 
Okay, hopefully that's... Um, oh, that's better. Okay. I'm starting to drown you out a bit, so... Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, anyway, so I got that uh, blue by uh, just the same paper towel effect with the blue and black. So that's the, the darker that, that we did with our, I guess, our second layer. Uh -huh. And, yeah. Okay. All right, so that explains that, I think. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so then here are our seams that we're going to be putting on. Um, I went with a, a three-quarter inch strip is what I used. Um, and, and basically, I just did the same effect with the back and you know the sideways and the vertical stripes you know same same steps except for uh, when I got to the white I did something a little bit different um, and so this is the steps clear up until the the white part so you um, cut the strips before you did the paint on I, them. I did I cut the strips first uh, you could actually paint it and then cut them and, and it would work out, but you just have to make sure that it dries enough before you actually cut it. Yeah. Um, otherwise, otherwise, it's going to, you know, your pastry wheel is going to start sticking and it's going to just be a big mess. So I would recommend cutting it first. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it ends up being a little bit more tedious because you have to do each one. But, I mean, if you have them right in a row, they, they go pretty quickly. Right. But, yeah. Yeah. So, and then here is what what I did with the white. Um, again, if you look at a pair of jeans, the seam has a different, you know, color pattern to it. If you can see that there's some spots that are dark and some spots that are light, and it all um, it all depends on where the the sewing has been, how it's been washed, you know, that kind of thing. So, but you can see that there's kind of little bubbles or stripes of color as you go down the seam. And so that's the effect that I wanted to get with the white. And so I just kind of did little vertical stripes along the along the, you know, the strip right there. And that's how I got that effect. And and again, I used the the dry brush, the dry fan brush and did a little bit of you know, I guess swiping, getting those little thread lines in there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then, once you get it to that point, you can put the strips on your cake, and I, you know, of course, you want to let it dry a little bit so that you're not, you know, sticking and messing up the the effect. And uh, it, it'll still be flexible when you paint on fondant. The you know the time that it takes to dry, the fondant underneath isn't gonna mess up. It's not going to crack and and you know like fondant usually does if you leave it too long. So right. so yeah, you can let this dry for quite a while and it'll be pretty flexible. Um, you just want it to be. I mean, it, it can be a tiny bit tacky, but if it starts to pull up some of the color when you let go of it, you don't want to mess with it yet. Let it let it sit. Okay. And then what did you, uh, did you just lay the strips directly on or did you use something to adhere them with? I used just a little bit of water. I mean, mm -hmm. at, at this point I was kind of in a hurry and so I was putting it together. Everything was still just a little bit damp, you know, so I could have just probably set it on the cake and it would have been fine. Mm -hmm. But, but I wanted just a tiny bit of water just to make sure that it was going to stick together. So, right. so nothing really fancy or, <laughs> or anything. <laughs> so once you get your strips on there, you'll see that the sides uh, where where you cut, there's going to still be white. And so you'll just take a, a small brush and brush, you know, your your color onto the sides. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Just to, you know, just to cover up those cut marks. And, you know, it doesn't have to be fancy. I just took that uh, darker blue color and just painted along, and it it went pretty quickly. Okay, so. yeah, it, it covered it up real nice, so you can't even tell where the white was. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it and it all kind of blends together because you have all the different you know textures and everything that you know just just paint it. it it's not. 
And if you get a streak somewhere that that you can tell it's a like a paint line, then you know you can actually go through and um, and you know touch it up with a paper towel. I actually um, now that I think about it, I should have. I should have remembered this, but I actually diluted the airbrush color even more when I did this part, uh, when I did the, the little side parts and painted that, uh, oh. because it was it was getting a little bit darker than I wanted it to be, and and so, I mean, you could you could just go back to the more blue, but I didn't want it to be, um, I wanted it to have the same amount of black that, you know, because it changed the the hue. I guess of the, I guess it changed the color when I added the black. I didn't want to right. go back to straight blue, or it would have been funny. But I didn't want it to be that same, you know, quite as dark. So I diluted it a little bit so that it could, you know, just, um, I guess, show a little bit of the fondant through still. Uh -huh. What did you dilute with? Just some water, or how did you? I did, yeah, I just used water. Water with airbrush colors actually works out pretty well. So if you're concerned about it, I, I guess you could use like a, a vodka or a or a lemon extract, you know, that kind of a thing. And okay. and it will dry faster if that's what you're, you know, going for. But the airbrush colors take a little while to dry anyway. And so adding that to it, you know, adding water to it doesn't make a, a big difference. Okay. So. All right. All right. And then this is adding on the pockets. I did the same thing with the pockets. I cut out the the pocket shape, and then I um, did the the effect. You know, the painted effect. And then once it was dry enough, I stuck it on. Um, you can see uh, the the imperfection there at the top corner, uh, the top right corner. There's uh -huh. a little bit more blue. Uh, then you know it doesn't have all the the top colors on it. I my finger got stuck in there, oh. <laughs> and it pulled up some color. <laughs> but again, that actually looks you know it, it makes it look like a, an actual you know washed denim kind of. Exactly, I thought so, you were meant to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so you know if you want that effect, go ahead and stick your fingers all over. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was I was kind of in a hurry at that point, and and also um, you're gonna add in those little sewing marks, and and my if you can see my little tool that has the you know the, it's just a Wilton brand uh, mm -hmm. tool, uh, you can see that it has some blue in the in the tool itself. It started to, to pick up some of the paint and, and pulling up a little bit of the fondant with it. And so I had been uh, just kind of dabbing it onto, uh, you know, my dusting puff that, mm -hmm. you know, of cornstarch to, to keep it from pulling up more color. And so that's why you can see in the lines of this, there's, it's kind of white on the, in the lines. Right. Uh, that's from the, the uh, cornstarch. And, you know. It ends up not being a problem in the end because you can steam it out, or you can. I I actually piped over it, um, so mm -hmm. so yeah. Um, but I was I was in a hurry, and so I, you know, just went to town on it without letting it dry <laughs> long enough, <laughs> and it started to started to do some funny things. So make sure if you're going to do that, I I would recommend letting it dry a little bit longer. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, and you know, so I just put some little lines in it for the pockets, you know, do something decorative and thought that would be kind of fun. <laughs> so yeah, and I think that is the overall the overall look. Um, one thing that I did that I didn't show a picture of was with my, um, with those seams that I, or not the seams, the, the sewing lines that I put in there. Um, I took some kind of a yellowish, tannish color of frosting, and I put it in a tip too, and I kind of just piped right along that line, but it was right against it so that every time there was a bump, it would kind of cut off the the frosting, and so it looks so it looked like you know little pieces of thread sewn into the 
in yeah sewn into the the little grooves right so, yeah I guess you can kind of see that um, if you're looking at the overall picture the the background picture you can probably see a little bit better um, what I'm what I was talking about um, mm -hmm. it wasn't perfect like I said I was in a hurry <laughs> <laughs> at this point, I, if I'd have gone back, I probably would have tried to get straighter lines on my on my seams, or, you know, on my sewing, and you know, because I again am that perfectionist. <laughs> but, but you know, but that's I, how I got I that. A lot of times, even in real jeans, it's not you know real perfect. So true, I think it adds to the authenticity. <laughs> <laughs> very true. So yeah, then I just added the you know the tags and all the the details, the piping and and that, and that was my cake. Oh well, it just turned out adorable. Thank you. Yeah, and, well, and I do. It looks like we've got. Let's see, I've got a question here. Um, okay. Just one second. Okay. Uh, this is from Gia. J-I-Y-A, Gia, I guess, <laughs> from Orlando, and she says, is this cake covered in fondant or buttercream, and can this technique be used either or? Uh, this was done on fondant. Um, if you have a really light hand, you could probably get away with it on, fond uh, on buttercream. Um, it would definitely have to be a crusted buttercream, but I would recommend sticking with the fondant. Honestly, because of all of the brushing that you're going to have to do, um, if you if you were to do this on a buttercream, you would have to make sure that it's nice and and firm every every step, you know, because the color is going to soften up that buttercream. So, I would recommend sticking with the with the fondant. So I, I don't know if if you want to do it on on a buttercream and try it out and let me know how it goes. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> there you go. Let someone else try that one. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I, would I think, personally would stick with the fondant. So. Yeah, I would think with the, especially with the brush and stuff, you'd end up just scraping away so much of the buttercream that that would it would cause some problems, I would think. Yeah. 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 That's what I tend to think. Yeah. So. And now on your the cake board there, that was just so cute too. It it looks almost like a cutting board. Did you is that all um, hand done too on the cake board? Yeah, I just you know I covered my my board my base with some fondant, and and I just uh, with a kind of a tannish brownish color, and then with a with a paper towel I I wadded it up I scrunched it, and then I took a. A more tan color of uh, my airbrush colors. Um, I had to create it because I didn't have that color. Um, I think it was a combination of brown and white and maybe a little bit of a um, little bit of yellow or, or even a touch of green to to pull out some more of that red. But I just took that and um, patted it down on the on the surface and that kind of gave that you know grainy marbly kind of effect so uh -huh. so same same went with that little leather patch that was up at the top it was the same kind of effect so oh yeah yeah and then the the red that was just all piped onto the board there then yeah I just took a tip too and some red food color or some red uh, buttercream I mm. you know I didn't worry too much about whether it's royal icing or buttercream or anything. I, I had the buttercream, and so I just, that's what I used. <laughs> so, so yeah, I just took a tip, too, and I just, um, I, I tried to go as fast as I could. I, you know, I, I, the whole thing about getting a, a cake for somebody else, you know, making money off of it is to try and get it through fast, you know. So yeah. I just kind of uh, went along and just dot 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 as as fast as I could um, but it, just little flower patterns and you know little swirls and things like that so that so that it had some red in there um, yeah. but not too you know not too fancy it just kind of looks like that embroidery kind of kind of look that, that you sometimes see on jeans right right oh. so. 
Well, how were the, the recipients just thrilled with it? Yeah, they loved it. They thought it was pretty great. <laughs> they told me I should be on one of those shows. <laughs> I already have been. Yeah, I did. <laughs> it was kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. Now, is there a story behind the, the cake? Uh, yeah, uh, this was uh, for a woman's 50th birthday, and I guess the husband is the one who ordered the cake, and uh, he said that their, their song is Forever in Blue Jeans. And oh. so... So yeah, that's why they had the Forever in Blue Jeans. And then on the little tag, I put her name. So, <laughs> so yeah, it was what? kind of fun. That is great. <laughs> well, I'm here. I don't see any other questions coming through at this time. So if anyone has another question, um, you know, feel free to, to send it to Amelia. Amelia, do you have, do you like prefer a certain brand or anything of the airbrush colors when you're using those? Well, you know, the only color I've, uh, the only brand I've ever really used is the um, Chroma Color. I guess it's a. I think Copy Cake puts out the Chroma Color. Uh huh. Um, when I first, you know, bought my airbrush, I bought this whole set of, you know, nice big container of colors, and I've only had to replace a few of them because, you know, of of running out mm -hmm. because it's been nice and large and big enough, and I. I don't do a lot of really detailed um, airbrushing. I, I would like to do more, <laughs> but but yeah, the, that's the only color that I've ever really, the only brand that I've ever really used. So okay, so, but it is a good a good brand. I really like them. Yeah. Well, obviously, looking at your work, it obviously works well. So. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right. Well, we do have um, my recipe that I can share with you, and then um, I guess go from there. Great. Yeah. Oh, I know yummy. It, yeah, I, I know it's <laughs> it's a little bit out of season for zucchini at this point, but I was going through my recipes. I, I've already shared two recipes because I've done two trainings, and just thought, what else can I share? And I saw this, and I thought, oh, I love zucchini bread. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, yeah, that so, looks yeah. yummy. It, you know, this is one of the first dessert type uh, recipes that I ever learned as a kid. Uh, one of the first things that my parents, or that my mom, uh, that I remember her making. And so this is this is one of those really comfort things to me because, I, I don't know, I guess it just takes me back. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, and for anyone who has a garden and if you grow zucchini, you know that zucchini never stops growing so it it's great to have lots of great recipes for it <laughs> yeah I I love zucchini every way you have it I, I just love it so but I mean in zucchini bread is probably the yummiest way to have it <laughs> so and it's, it's a really easy recipe too I mean you just mix the wet mix the dry put them together pour them in a pan and bake it for you know about an hour so it's it is. Uh -huh. It's a really easy, easy recipe, and you know, yeah. Now, will you good. be posting this on the website for in case you know people don't have time to write it all down? Yes, yes. If you, yeah, I will be posting it later today on the on the blog, so you guys can go and and look it up there. Okay. Great. Yeah, and by the way, this training will actually kind of repost itself right where it is. So if you guys want to see it again or have missed parts of it, you can just, just wait a little bit until it is completely there and you can watch the whole thing over again. So, okay. so yeah. Right. All right, so I guess maybe I explained it well enough that there's no more questions. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking to see if there's any more, and um, uh, as it doesn't look like anything else has come through. Um, hopefully my, my end is working okay here. <laughs> So if, if you did send a question um, and I didn't ask it, it I, I'm, I apologize, but um, hopefully we've covered everything. And I'm sure if you do still have questions, I'm sure Amelia wouldn't mind if, can they, can they contact you through the blog or anything if they have any Absolutely. questions? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. You guys can ask me anywhere, anytime. I'm, I'm on Facebook. I'm on, you know, on the blog and you can, you can always 
ask me questions. I'm I'm always up. And there. I can vouch for that because I have I have called her or, 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 tech, or <laughs> sent her a message, and she always answers back. She's so good about sharing her knowledge, and we just so appreciate that. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll tell you what I know. <laughs> if I don't know, I'll know. <laughs> I won't pretend to know. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, thank you so much, Amelia. I think that I am so excited to try that technique. I can't wait till I have a chance to do that. Yeah. And um, yeah, that was that was wonderful. And um, hopefully, we can all also make some of your zucchini bread and <laughs> yummy. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's that's the recipe my mom gave me, and you know that's what I grew up with. So I know it's good. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Well, thank you, Michelle, for, for hosting. I really appreciate it. <laughs> oh, yes, it was fun. Thank you for inviting me. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And everyone go check out her blog and her cake app. It's a, it's a good one. I have it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All right. Well, I guess we'll see you guys all next time. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>